Annalise there in the United States. Let's turn our attention back to local developments. I've got Ben Oquist and David Gazard for our regular discussion. And David, encouraging signs again out of, uh, well, not just Victoria, but the nation's response on COVID with this vaccine development, a letter of intent with AstraZeneca. Yeah, it's a step forward. Um, I, I kind of have enjoyed seeing, you know, the process around um, getting a vaccine because it's still not a sure thing, right? But my uh, my optimism on that is driven by a sense that there's never been more brain power yeah. or more money going to a, a thing like this. And quite by chance, I, I actually met the the head of supercomputing at IBM, and they have a worldwide network of computers going, supercomputers crunching numbers yeah. to try to come up with the right combination. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, along with a lot of other people, particularly Victorians, I'd say right now, that, yeah. that there is something in the offing. Well, Paul Kelly, the acting chief medical officer, also um, is sounding more optimistic. Greg Hunt was on our program on Sunday again more optimistic than he has been. So we hope that it's it's well-placed optimism. I'm going to be speaking to an infectious diseases expert mm. in about uh, 10 minutes from now for his analysis. Mm. But what's your sense of where we're at? I saw that Hunt interview and, like everybody, was relieved and great to see him changing his tune. I I'm a bit more on the let's be careful here and not let things run away with themselves. There's so, as the company themselves said, there's a long way to go how effective it will be, how long it will last. There's so far to go and I'm a little bit worried that this kind of wave of kind of optimism this week is kind of creating false hope. One, you've got to get the vaccine right, whether it's effective. Then there's the complications of rolling it out um, and that's a big debate to come and we've got to ensure the whole community gets it um, and there's going to have to be a big program to counter the disinformation that's out there. That anti-vaxxer brigade is taken hold on se certain segments of social media. There's a big responsibility on the tech giants to do something about that, that disinformation that's getting out of control. Um, and the, how to take them on is difficult. Um, and uh, the Prime Minister's got to rein some on his own side, spreading dis disinformation about some of this stuff. You know, seeing the crazy stuff that Craig Kelly says online about various aspects, not of the vaccine, but of some of the cures that aren't there yet. So. All that debate about how to roll it out and how to control the disinformation, um, let alone whether the vaccine itself is effective um, or, or, or durable to start with, is it means there's a long way to go and we shouldn't let our leaders get too much false hope in the community when there's so much work to be done, one, on the vaccine, but two, on how we administer it, who gets it and countering the disinformation of the anti-vaxxers. Yeah, it's a balancing act, isn't it, between not getting ahead of themselves but also you need to give... A sense of optimism that there is there is going to be, you know, another yeah, another side to this. Look, I mean, Ben raises some good points there. There, you know, and I think I saw the PM today talking about how sort of money wasn't really going to be a, 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 a an object when it came to rolling out the vaccine. I do think you know, there's this goes to the broader point that we've talked about before, where you have people applying an ideological lens over what is a public health crisis, where you know, you're going to get suddenly a, a, a freedom thing. I, I should be free not to take the vaccine if it becomes mandatory, thereby jeopardising the rest of society. So I, th I think there is a challenge there, and we have saw that with the, the, the downloading of the app. Certain people said, well, I don't trust this and I don't trust that. So there is definitely a debate to be had there. Um, but, I, you know, I, I sort of put my faith in the fact that there's more people yeah. than ever before around the world working harder than ever before to get a, uh, get a vaccine done. On the, um, the aged care issue, the Prime Minister earlier in the day said, look, public health is a Victorian responsibility and that sort of thing. Um, it sounded clunky, but surely... Well, what's your ass assessment of this? Do you think the PM should just be just a bit more upfront? Because, I mean, I think people will yeah. cut him slack because it's an absolutely diabolical thing. I mean, we're seeing people say to Daniel yeah. Andrews, we understand, just get it fixed. But yeah. I think the same thing could be said at the PM. I, I think we're, we're actually seeing some of the limits of federation here. I mean, that's really where we're at, isn't it? I mean, we are... You've got a federal government that's pulled together a national cabinet, but on some of these essential issues does not have the regulatory powers to do certain things. And so you've had a patchwork quilt of responses around public health. And that probably, you know, has been managed as well as it can. 
But within those levels of government, there's sometimes been some disagreement and so on and so forth. I, I tend to think that, you know, the virus does not respect regulatory boundaries. And we've all known that certain areas of the community are more vulnerable than others. And that's why we've all worked really hard together to suppress the virus and hopefully, you know, as Victoria has found, put in place the resilience and the capability to control outbreaks so you don't have to shut your entire economy down, right? That's been the point. So it's it's pointless sort of really sort of pointing fingers about who was responsible for this. The virus doesn't respect that. You've got to stop it before it gets out into the vulnerable communities. It's a very good point that the virus doesn't respect borders, jurisdictions. Mm. I mean, it's... It's a very tough uh, thing in terms of the, the jurisdictions in being responsible. I think getting into the weeds for the Prime Minister is, is just not a... It, it's not something that will resonate. No, I heard Andrew Probin saying there is some concern out there that uh, the Prime Minister's there for the good times. Andrew uh, Clennell. Uh, and Andrew Clennell, oh. sorry. Um, Andrew sorry. Probin's our friend down the hall. <laughs> sorry, Andrew. A good friend. Wrong Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew Clennell saying that there's a bit of a worry that the Prime Minister is... Um, there for the, the good times and blames the states when things go wrong. Now, that, that is a worry. You don't want to get into that kind of habit. Ultimately, the Prime Minister's wants, responsible. It's Australia. Um, the virus doesn't respect those borders. Um, and I think David's right about one thing, this resilience issue, that we are uncovering that our aged care sector is not resilient enough. Um, and whether it's the pandemic or something else, I think we are having a bigger debate about whether it's uh, how to address homelessness, which has been cured by the states, how to address aged care, how to address childcare, um, how to address debt. Um, some, some bigger debates are being allowed by this pandemic, and that's a good thing. Now, I don't want to say, you know, look for silver linings in things, but one thing that we, we must take the opportunities from this crisis and getting a better aged care system, better regulated, better funded, yeah. um, more, more government, federal government involvement to get it right is an opportunity, and the Royal Commission hopefully will take us there. Absolutely. I mean, crisis, uh, crises shouldn't be wasted in a reform sense, 100%. In, in terms of the politics of all this, so we're going to get first... Uh, real-time test in a state or territory this Saturday, the Northern Territory, and Michael Gunner basically running entirely on his handling of COVID, particularly on the border issue. Mm. I think um, the handling of the virus suits the incumbent. Um, there's a different issue around whether you've controlled it and there's a view around who best to handle the ongoing maintenance of the economy coming out of COVID. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why, and I think this is, again, one of these tests of federation where you have, you know, politicians now coming to this sort of parochial view that we can balkanise our states to heighten the tension around coronavirus that I don't think is particularly helpful. Um, I think it goes to sort of some of the, the, the fear and loathing and, and the, the, the stifling of economic growth because you, you're restricting people from doing what they can do. I mean, I, I look at Parliament coming down and mm. you've now got Queensland saying that the ACT, where there are no active cases, is a hot spot and MPs going back to Queensland are going to have to isolate for or quarantine for two weeks, which is, you know, sort of defies any rational view about the way things are going in the ACT. So we do have to yeah. get over some of those things. Exactly right. Just finally... Uh, ben, to you on the the first major political test. I mean, we had even Monero, but this is the first mm. uh, state or territory election mm. in this environment. And, mm. and Michael Gunner had a bit of a tough time on the economy and debt and so on. Now zeroing in completely on COVID and his response there. Yeah, well, the big the big test. Um, Donald Trump, notwithstanding, um, incumbents generally do well in a crisis. And we're going to see whether that plays out. I'm also interested in how that energy and gas debate that you were alluding to earlier today and some of your discussion plays out because there's a big anti-fracking movement up there that the Territory Alliance is part of. And I think um, I think that's a big debate to play out there, which we'll be watching closely. Ben and David, thanks so much, as always. After the break, leaders expressing hope of a vaccine 